The American-German company Arterian will transfer tens of thousands of its AI-powered drone strike kits to Ukraine. This was reported by the Financial Times. According to Arterian CEO Lorenz Meyer, the company will supply Ukraine with 33,000 such systems by the end of the year, which will be the largest delivery of such systems ever, 10 times more than before. We sent thousands, and now we are supplying tens of thousands, he said. They have a fantastic drone industry. We want to contribute what they don't yet have, software-based warfare, he said. It is noted that the supply will be carried out within the framework of Arterian's $50 million contract with the Pentagon. The contract is part of the U.S. government's security assistance to Ukraine. The delivery will include Skynode mini-computers with their own software, camera, and radio module, which transform ordinary drones into autonomous combat platforms, resistant to jammers and capable of pursuing targets at a distance of up to one kilometer. Meyer said that Arterian software will enable groups of autonomous drones to operate as a swarm and coordinate with each other. According to Meyer, Arterian systems will enable an evolutionary step in warfare, allowing autonomous drone swarms to communicate with one another. According to experts, this step will further strengthen Ukraine's advantage with unmanned aerial vehicles on the battlefield and create a new stage in modern warfare technologies. Previously, Ukraine's Ministry of Defense launched the K-4 Startup Studio program to support military startups developing AI-based solutions. The deployment of drones equipped with Skynode demonstrates that the agreement to deepen cooperation in drone production between Ukraine and the US remains relevant. Arterian's director noted that his company was a pioneer in working with Kiev. This is essentially a recognition that the combat hardening that took place in Ukraine in the field of drones is relevant. It's a way to support Ukraine, but it's also technology that NATO countries want to acquire, Meyer said. At the same time, the developer assures that his company does not plan to compete with existing Ukrainian projects. The goal is to contribute what Ukraine currently doesn't have. Ukrainian forces have eliminated a Russian colonel in Kharkiv region, the Operational Strategic Group of Forces, Kortitsia, reported on July 26. According to operational information, troops from Ukraine's defense forces destroyed Colonel Lebedev, commander of the 83rd Motorized Rifle Regiment of the 69th Motorized Rifle Division of the Russian Army, who was leading assault operations in the Velikoberlik direction, the report stated. Lebedov is not the first senior Russian military official killed in the war in Ukraine. Earlier in July, the Ukrainian armed forces eliminated the command of the 155th Marine Brigade of the Russian Pacific Fleet. At the same time, Major General Mikhail Gudkov, Deputy Commander-in-Chief of the Russian Navy, who had previously commanded the 155th Brigade, was also killed. Additionally, on June 30, Colonel Ruslin Goryakin, Chief of Staff of Russia's 8th Guards Army, was eliminated during a missile strike in eastern Donetsk region. Meanwhile, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky revealed on Friday that his army was facing fierce fighting around the embattled city of Pokrovsk in eastern Donetsk region, where Russian troops have been trying to advance for months. In his nightly address, Zelensky said, with referees to Ukraine's top commander, Oleksandr Swyrsky, that the situation around Pokrovsk was the current focal point of attention in the war. All operational directions were covered, with particular focus on Pokrovsk. It receives the most attention, Zelensky stated. In a separate update on Telegram channel, Sersky identified Pokrovsk and five other zones as some of the most challenging areas along the 1,000-kilometer front line. The Russian Federation is paying a high price for its attempted, summer offensive, Sersky wrote. Russian troops have been trying for months to advance on Pokrovsk, a strategic transport hub with a pre-war population of around 60,000, most of whom have since been evacuated. Back in May, Sersky reported that Ukrainian forces had managed to stabilize the situation near the town, which is a strategic hub and had a pre-war population of 60,000. 
It should be noted that on Thursday, Russia's defense ministry announced the capture of two villages on either side of Pokrovsk, Zverov to the west and Novoekonomik to the east. A third village near the city, Novodoretsk, was declared by Moscow to be captured earlier in the week. Kiev has not commented on Russian reports about the capture of the two villages by Russian troops. However, General Staff of Ukraine's military said the villages Zverov and Novoekonomik were in areas where Russian troops were trying to penetrate Ukrainian defenses. Ukrainian expert Ivan Yakovina named the moment when the Russian army could rebel if Ukrainian troops break through the Russian front somewhere. Of course, I understand that it is premature to talk about this now, but the situation at the front is constantly changing and theoretically this cannot be ruled out. This could lead to some Russian units disobeying their command because soldiers and officers in Russia simply hate their leaders their commanders, and we know this from the huge number of videos, posts and telegram channels that these Russian military themselves run. Even the complete lack of water in Donetsk and the Donetsk region has already become a political factor in the discontent of Russian troops. This causes angry posts not only from the civilian population, but also from the Russian military who are there, the political observer expressed his opinion. They are also terribly unhappy with the events that are taking place. And at some point, I don't know what is going to happen. Something might crack. Some unexpected event might occur and set off a whole chain of events that will lead to some kind of riot or some kind of uprising or something like that. Because the potential for this is very great, Ivan Yakovina added to the above. The expert noted an important nuance. Or there is another version of the crisis that could turn the Russian system of power upside down, a partly predictable crisis. This is, of course, the death of Ramzan Kadyrov. In Chechnya, after the death of its current leader, an internal struggle for power will certainly break out. And the most interesting thing is that the Russian Federation will not be able to participate in this struggle for power, simply because all Russian troops are now in Ukraine. Ivan Yakovina also commented on the strange interest of Russian legislators in the topic of occultism. He believes that the official recognition of the existence of Satan by state authorities in the Russian Federation can only mean one thing. Putin is preparing something terrible, for example, a mass murder or some other serious crime. In my opinion, Putin takes this whole story quite seriously. That is, he does not take it as a joke. The fact that this satanic movement was banned, he needed it for some reason. Of course, I do not know why this might be needed because I do not have a very large amount of knowledge in this area. But for Putin, taking into account all sorts of occult things that have long been practiced in the Kremlin and around the Kremlin in general, for Putin, all this is quite serious. The journalist expressed his point of view. Ivan Yakovina explained in more detail what all this could mean. In short, I assume that Putin is preparing some kind of large-scale mass murder or some other large-scale crime under all this cover. In Russia, it has been the case for a long time that the authorities forbid their people what they themselves really want to do. So, they forbid all sorts of foreign words, LGBT, or in this case, they forbid Satanism. Why do they forbid it? Because the people can't. The authorities not only can, but they really want it. 